Today we're going to continue talking about electric potential and the electric field. Actually, today we're going to talk about equipotentials and the electric field. So um, we're going to see how potential and the electric field work together and, and complement each other and what the relationship between the two of them is. So what the relationship between the two of them are. So. We're going to be dealing with an equipotential, an equipotential line, I guess. Now, that's um, pretty easy to understand what it is. It's a line that has equal potential. So it's a line with equal potential at all points. That's an equipotential line. That's pretty straightforward. So <clears throat> let's get into it. Just as an idea of, of sort of what I think when I think about what potential is, um, okay, these lines, these lines here, and we'll do it, I guess, this line here in blue is an electric field line, okay, and then the shape uh, of that area is telling you what the charges are doing to the space around them. So, so here we would have a positive charge and, and here would be the location of the negative charge and and so this this sort of vector contour map shows what the space around those charges is doing so for us it's telling it's it's telling us what the um i can't really see that one it's telling us what it's telling us what the voltage is at that point um so it, it's showing is showing the voltage there, meaning that it takes positive voltage to move up here. And the electric field lines, these, these lines right here, will show me how a positive charge would want to move. So it's a little bit analogous to gravity. Right? If I have a positive charge and I place it up here, it's going to follow these lines down and away. Um, so looking at this spot right here halfway in between my positive charge and my negative charge I know I know right there that the potential is equal to zero but I also know that the electric field points strongly towards that negative charge okay if I put an object there sure it might be at what we call sea level zero potential but it's experiencing a force pushing it away um, so this is how this is how we need to be thinking about um, equipotentials, what voltage means and what the electric field means. Voltage is the contour and the electric field is, is the direction that something would move. Um, a more realistic picture of something that we could draw every day is, is this. So these dotted lines here are equipotentials. So, and then these, dotted, these lines here are the electric field. And this is of the same thing that we just saw. Um, so, so looking at this, this would be voltage is zero. This would be like plus 10, plus 20, plus 30, and plus 40. 40. And over here, near the other charge, we would have negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 30, and negative 40. Um, again, because we get negative voltage from negative charge, positive voltage from positive charge. So if we recall how we draw the electric field, right, it points from positive towards negative straight lines and they never cross, we, we see an interesting relationship between equipotentials and electric field lines. The first thing we notice is that the, the electric field points to decreasing voltage. Mostly because it points away from positive charge, but as far as equipotentials and electric field lines go, they point towards values of decreasing voltage. Decreasing voltage tends to be around negative charges. The other thing we see is that electric field lines and I'm just going to say equipotential instead of having to write it again and again. Electric field lines and equipotentials are all perpendicular to each other. Um, as these things cross, we see that they are perpendicular to each other. Um, 
it's a very very helpful thing um, uh, we also see that a place where the voltage may equal zero it's not at the same time true that the electric field is zero so let's say that I'm here and I want to move to here. I have potential one and potential two. My change in potential between those two points. My change in potential between those two points is um, V2 minus V1. So my change in potential would be, what is that, negative 20 volts minus 20 volts or my change of potential would be negative 40 volts because the entire time that I was moving I moved down in potential if I wanted the work required to move a specific charge it would be whatever my charge is times that change in voltage and I could use that to do one half If a charge moved that way, it would go with the field, 1 half mv squared plus q delta v. I could figure out how fast it went. Or that would tell me the potential energy required to do so, or the work required to do so. Uh, very, very useful thing. So, that's a good look at equipotentials and electric field lines. So, we have relationships between all of these things that are sometimes tricky to keep up with. So, we start with force, and in this case we're talking about electric force, so... KQQ over R squared. Um, and we began our discussion by talking about the relationship between force and the electric field. Electric field being KQ over R squared. An electric field being our representation of force per unit charge. In fact, that's how we get to the electric field. We take force and we divide it by a charge, force per unit charge. It's kind of like acceleration for charges. If we want to go back, obviously it's just the inverse of that relationship up there, and so force is equal to a charge times the electric field that it's in. That's our first little step. The next thing that we dealt with was electrostatic potential energy, and, it's, and what sets this apart is energy. Now we could be talking about work, we could be talking about energy. Either way the thing that we're talking about is measured in joules. It is energy and we're going to say energy when we talk about that. Now uh, this is K Q Q over R and to get there from force we know that potential energy is the negative integral of fourth with respect to R. That's how we get to potential energy. And to get back, again, we do the reverse of that process. So we would say that force is the negative derivative of potential energy with respect to radius, which opens up a lot of possibilities. If I'm only given a function of potential and I want to find a place where the force is equal to zero, Take derivative, set it equal to zero. Things like that. And the last thing that we've talked about is voltage. <clears throat> voltage, again, kq over r. And we see with that the same sort of relationship um, that electric field and force had. Voltage being potential energy divided by charge, or energy per unit charge. And then going backwards, uh, potential energy being a charge times a voltage. And again, that could be energy being charged times a voltage or work being charged times a voltage, depending on what the situation calls for. And now the relationship between the electric field and the voltage. This is, this is pretty similar to what we had before, saying that voltage um, is equal to the negative integral of the electric field with respect to radius. Or that the electric field is equal to the negative 
derivative of voltage with respect to position. This is the relationship between all of these things. I'm going to leave it up, pause it, write this down. It's important to be able to go between all of these things. In fact, this interrelatedness allows us to solve a lot of different kinds of problems. So get this down. It's important. You need to know. So just in general, looking at an equipotential problem, in fact, looking at an equipotential problem that we will tackle in class at some point, here is a graph of equipotentials. We see that moving to the right. We're decreasing in voltage. Um, and in fact, just looking at this, I would say that somewhere there's a negative charge over here. I would say that somewhere there's a positive charge over here and maybe a positive charge over here. Just looking at what it's going to be. Now, if I wanted to draw the electric field lines that, that go along with this, again, they're going to, in general, point towards decreasing values of voltage. And we're going to see that they cross at 90 degrees, um, which means you know the electric field is going to have to bend to accommodate crossing like that. Those those would be a sample of what the electric field lines would look like. I'm not a good enough drawer to be able to put in too terribly many more, but the idea is that the electric field is at every point perpendicular. And in general, the electric field is pointing towards values of decreasing voltage, which makes sense because we know the electric field points towards negative charges. So that would be an idea of what the electric field would look like that we could get just from looking at this equipotential. Um, the next thing we could do with this, uh, and this always gives students a little trouble at the beginning is estimate the value of the electric field at a given point. So let's say I want to know what the electric field at point P is. That's my question. Well let's look at the information we know here. Well, let's say from here to here, from between these two points, I know that my displacement, my change in position is 0.01 meters or you know, centimeter and I also know that between those two points my change in voltage is 5 volts. Now what we can do is assume that it's on a small enough thing we know that the electric field is dv over dr, negative dv over dr. We also, if we're going to make an estimate, could, could lighten that up and say it's my change in voltage over my change in position. That is what we're going to do here. So my electric field would be 5 volts divided by 0.01 meters, giving me a value close to 500 newtons per meter. And again, signs with something like the electric field just tell me direction. And I know that the direction is going to be pointing more or less that way. But it's a way of using this graph of, uh, of potential to find an electric field when I don't really know any information about my charges. Um, a lot of useful things that we can do with this. So 